Praise God. At this time, we're going to go to a song by the Lord's messengers called the Missionary Song. Was the missionary song by the Lord's messengers from New Life Fellowship of Believers.
at your door Don't be afraid It's not like before Don't you give in Don't let it bring you down You don't have to worry anymore Cause we've been made more than conquerors Overcomers in this life We've been made victorious blood of Jesus Christ so hold on cause you're getting stronger every day there's no reason for you to go astray don't be leaning to your understanding on him and we'll all say that we've been made more than conquerors overcomers in this world we've been made victorious Jesus Christ, overcomers in this world. it there and we fed and clothed people and then he led us back into Detroit where we lived for a year and a half mm -hmm. and I got back into the ministry mm -hmm. for the last three Praise years. Because I know a church uh, 
you know, God puts a different uh, uh, desire, and uh, when God has a calling and anointing in somebody's Amen. life, He'll put that desire, that burden, deep within yes. one's heart. And in our church, you know, uh, there's a lot of different burdens and desires, <clears throat> but it's obvious when people think of feeding the uh, hungry and clothing the naked, they think of Mel and Sandy Gower. Because that's the burden and the anointing God's put on right. your lives, at least at this particular yes. time. And I don't see why he'd change that, but all things are possible. Yeah. But uh, <clears throat> I appreciate that myself, <clears throat> maybe more than a lot of others, because, you know, I used to be in that situation. You know, there was years before I was saved, uh, living the life I was and, and doing all those things. that I was on the streets many times without a home. Uh, a lot of times I only had the clothes on my back. Many nights I'd have to just sit up all night in a, uh, a cafe somewhere, you know, after I bummed uh, enough yeah. for a cup of coffee. You know, nobody to talk to, yes. lonely, hungry. Sometimes I wouldn't eat for three days. So I've been up and at him in the world and down and out, and probably more down and out many times. And I know how it feels out there. It, mm -hmm. it, it's lonely. It's really bad when you don't have a place to stay and and you feel like nobody That's cares, right. and you're going from one hotel to yes. another, or sleeping on the street or in cars, and it's just uh, terrible. Right. And I appreciate uh, well, that Steve, calling in your life. You really wouldn't realize how many people in St. Clair Shores, East Detroit, Mount Clemens, Roseville, that are sleeping on the streets tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, two years ago, we had an old lady, she's about 76 years old, sleeping in the back of a car in the middle of January. And as the ministry has, in, has gone forward, the Lord has brought more and more of these types of people into our location mm -hmm. that we can minister to them. You know, we give them food, we give them clothing if they need it, we give them a blanket, we try to find them a place to sleep. Uh, we try, we, mainly we minister to them about Jesus. Right. And sometimes we have to send them back out in the street yeah. because mm -hmm. there's no place for them. Right. You know, we, we've got on our knees before the Lord and said, Lord, what do you want us to do? And it breaks our heart when we see somebody comes in. We have a young man that comes into our place once in a while. He's mentally retarded. Yes. And his brother kicks him out of the house every once in a while. And his brother keeps his Social Security checks. And we try to do something for him. But the other night he came in and we, we just had crying. tears in he our heart for crying. him. He was crying. His brother kicked him out. He was drunk. And, and uh, he was just that night we had to yeah. let him go sleep in the street. We gave him a blanket and fed him a cheese sandwich. Go. and. We, we had no place for him. Nobody would take him, mm -hmm. you know. And he did have some problems. He lied and he drank himself, but, and nobody would take him. Mm -hmm. Nobody would take him. And we've taken people under our house ourselves because nobody would take him. Right. And and you you can't do that very often and keep your yeah. uh, keep from being burnt out, you know, yeah. yourself. Right. Right. But there are but, a lot of hurting people. We're finding that right. they're coming in, and we're finding a lot of uh, bitterness in their heart oh, towards yeah. the churches, mm -hmm. bitterness in their heart just towards their parents. Uh, just hurting uh, they don't feel worthy mm -hmm. and they'll be just crying in there we'll start ministering to them and you just see the tears and it'll go back from their childhood they've been abused or molested and uh, you just cry with them yeah. and you know you can't heal everything in that instant the Lord can we right. pray with them we've seen some instant deliveries but most of them have gone back out there and they come back and they're frustrated and and they keep asking why, why, and we just keep ministering the word and love. Love is is the key. Right, right. Love has been the key of of all the wounded people that have been coming in. Because a lot yeah. of them really feel nobody cares, That's isn't that yeah. right? Yes. When you start to open up your hearts and want to bend a listening ear, see, that see, causes a spark of hope in them. That's right. You see, Steve, you, you talked about being out in the street yourself. Mm -hmm. You just talked about sitting in in places that you w would rather be someplace else. You know, we've never done that, okay? Mm -hmm. But God put a desire in my right. wife's heart and my heart to do what we're doing. But we feel, we feel what these people are going yes, through. We feel you. it when we're out in the street on Gratiot, where, you know, there's a saying, cruising Gratiot. We go out in the street and we see rebellion. Mm -hmm. We see Satan everywhere. I mean, we just see it. Mm -hmm. And they're hurting. Right. People out there hurting, and they want to hear the gospel they, of Jesus And they'll Christ. lie to us. Just because they've been lying so much to the yeah. system, they feel they have to come in our place and lie in order to get food or clothes. Mm -hmm. They've been revealed. Right. Most of the time, the mm -hmm. Lord will reveal it. But they feel they have to lie to us in order to get something out of us, which we freely give yes. if it, we know they're in need. And I, and I know what the enemy would like to do through that. He'd like to get you so upset with mm -hmm. the liars that you'd harden That's your heart it. and say, forget them all. And 
pull out a ministry. Well, I had one but today. But you're aware of that, and you <laughs> right. say, no way, devil, yeah. you're going on, and you keep ministering. You know, okay. we, have, we have to be careful mm -hmm. uh, when we're ministering to th these people a lot of times because we will get fooled because our heart yeah. gets in a way, but we let the Lord do it. As, you know, as I heard someone tonight saying that, you know, I'm empty, so the Lord has to fill me back up, you know. Yes. So, so the Lord reveals to us things. Mm -hmm. But I tell you, there are so many people, and I'd like to just say to the people that are listening tonight, there's people out there hurting. I mean, they're really hurting physically and mentally and spiritually, and they want someone to listen to them. If nothing listen, else, listen, listen to them. Yeah. The Bible tells us that if, if you can do something for your brother, just don't say, well, I'll pray for you, be, be cool, keep warm, uh, and go on your way. If you've got five bucks in your pocket and somebody says he needs gas money to get someplace, mm -hmm. give it to him. Right. The Lord will return it to you. Yeah. Yes, yes. yes. Well, see, people have a fear that, oh, if I give, I exactly. won't have, which is in total contrary to what God's Word says. Right. It says, give and it shall right. be given. Exactly. And, in fact, I wanted to read this here. Uh, so much of, you know, the, the hereafter, everyone's going to come before God. And it's going to come down to the Bible says this, when the Son of Man shall come in His glory and all the holy angels with Him, then shall He sit upon the throne of His glory, and before Him shall be gathered all nations. And He shall separate them one from, from another, as a shepherd divides mm -hmm. his sheep from the goats. He'll, he'll set the sheep on His right hand, the goats on the left. Then shall the King, or Jesus, say to them on His right hand, Come, you blessed of My Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, and fed you, or thirsty, and gave you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger, and took you in, or naked, and clothed you? Or when did we see you sick, or in prison, or came to you? And the king shall answer and say to them, Truly I say unto you, Inasmuch as you have done it unto the one of the least of these, my mm -hmm. brethren, mm -hmm. you've done it unto me. Right. And he goes on to say uh, uh, to the other ones, uh, depart from him, uh, you cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels, for I was a hungry, you didn't give me any food, I was thirsty, you didn't give me any to drink, I was sick, you didn't visit me, in prison you didn't visit me, so on and so forth. And then he says, well, they say, well, when did we ever see you yeah. sick? When right. did we ever see you hungry, Lord? Right. And he'll say, hey, in as much as you did it to the least of these, my brethren, you did it unto me. So I think it's very important that every Christian has compassion in their heart to minister to the physical needs of others. You know, clothing, food, uh, shelter, and such like. We ought to have it in us or be supporting ministries that do that because that's the same thing as us in turn right, doing it. In fact, before right. I forget, I know your, your ministry is always in, in financial need. Oh, yes. what, uh, what needs do you have right now? Why don't you make them known to the people? Well, and if they desire, they can get behind them. Okay, we, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, really have a financial need, not so much as uh, just to keep the doors open. We want to do more than keep the doors open. Right. We have a need that this, uh, every Thanksgiving and Christmas season, we always feed uh, a lot more than what we do at this time of the year, uh, at this time of the year or earlier. Right. We need finances so that we can buy the turkeys and right. the chickens and the hams that we give away every year, right. and we give them away freely to those who people who really need them. And the halfway homes. Uh, and the halfway homes, we feed the alcoholic halfway homes at that time of the year, and we we do it throughout the year too. And we need help all the time, not just at the holidays. Right. The one thing that really uh, I have to really watch myself, not so much my wife, but uh, is that. I get upset because people don't help sometimes. Mm -hmm. And January comes and all of a sudden there's no more sick people, there's no more people sleeping on the street, there's no more people hungry, and all of a sudden the finances stop coming in, the food stops coming in, the blankets stop coming in, but there's people out there hurting still, they're still hungry. Mm -hmm. They need it. We need finances, we need food, I mean we just put $500 worth of food on this sh uh, shelf a couple weeks ago that, uh, with the help of one of the churches, and it's almost gone. We, we just, and we just don't give it out indiscriminately. Everybody that comes in gets food. Right. Even with their kindness, they get food one time. Mm -hmm. But we help, we help everybody we can. We need food. We need finances. Uh, we get a lot of clo clothes, so we don't need a lot of clothes. But a lot of the halfway houses right. are asking for beds right. and stoves, refrigerators. We can't store it at the outreach center, but we refer it. Right. And they'll go and pick it up, but they're in desperate need of of beds, blankets, household items. 
So. Um, Do you have a number that you'd be? They could always yes. call our church and we'd refer them, but how about you uh, give your number yes, right now? Yes, it's 776-1230. And if we're not there, the recorder is on, and just leave your name and number, and we'll get back with you and, and what you have. And someone will pick it up. You know, you were saying something important that needs to be said. The people tend to rally at the holidays, oh, yeah. Thanksgiving and Christmas, right. you know. And I think a lot of people do that out of guilt, too, because yeah, they don't they do it in the rest of time of the year. They feel, uh, well, I can pay my dues this one time a year, right. and I'll be cool. I mean, we get tremendous support at Christmas time, yeah, and, that's and that's great. Good. That's yeah, great. that's great. And we thank God for all the people. You know, last Thanksgiving Day, we fed 800 people. Mm -hmm. I mean, at the halfway houses, we had a right. party. We had... We had a, a big day at yes. this church. I mean, the best Thanksgiving right. I've had in my life. Mm -hmm. But it, you just went back to what you were saying before about when somebody comes through that door, we don't know that we're not entertaining an angel. We right. don't, we're entertaining Jesus. Right. We're reaching out to Jesus when right. he's there. Right. And, and that's the way we see everybody. Whether Praise he's God. kindness or not, we see Jesus. Praise God. And, and we just want the people to know that, you know, every dime that comes in there goes right out the door. Right. One I way know. or another. Right. It doesn't go in my pocket. It doesn't right. go into Wayne right. Mailey, who's right. the director on the board, or, right. or Mel, uh, Kevin Meldrum, or, or Wayne's wife. Right. It goes right out the door. It goes in one door and out the other door to help somebody. As right. soon as we get it, it goes back out right. in those areas. Yeah, 100% of the money goes right in the ministry. Everything. Right. right. Yes. Everything. Yeah, that, that's important because uh, I think a lot of people are concerned about their dollars getting eaten up in administrative and costs. And rightfully so. You know, yes. uh, and that happens sometimes. Right. I mean, it happens a lot of times. The more ministry grows, then yes. you've got to get bigger things. Means, and yeah. then you send in a dollar and only 30 cents of it gets out to the street. Right. 70 cents yes. is ate up over here, right. something like that. Something I'd like to mention, Steve, to you is that Many times when a Saturday night comes, it's real tough for us to go on a Saturday night sometimes because we've worked all week and I've worked all day sometimes and we just don't feel like going, but we go. Right. Last Saturday night, I had a man come in to our outreach center that goes out in the street with us and he hasn't been in for about six weeks. And I kind of neglected to call him. I didn't, you know, I figured, well, if he wanted to come, so on. But I didn't know that he was hurting. And that night, I wasn't exactly feeling that up tip top myself. And I said, well, Lord, you know, mature Christian does what he's supposed to do even when he doesn't want to. Mm -hmm. We went in and this gentleman came in looking for me. And by the make a long story short, he sat there with me and we cried together because he was hurting so bad. Mm -hmm. He was just hurting so bad. So we not only minister to the people yeah, off the street. We do a lot of ministering just with Christians. the volunteer, the workers mm -hmm. there yes. uh, between ourselves. Because they have hard times we too. Oh. Some days the pressure and, gets, and the Bible says to weep with them that weep. That's mourn it. with them we that cry, mourn. We cry, yeah. we laugh, we sing, and it's sure. just if no one else comes in, we minister to each other. Right. We've gotten right. through a lot of trials together. Yeah. And grow. Something that's exciting has really been happening at the Outreach Center in the last six weeks is we've really grabbed a hold of the uh, praise and worship. You know, so many of us Christians, we, we, we pray, mm -hmm. but we really don't fight any spiritual battles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We begin to pray and praise the Lord, mm -hmm. and we pray march and praise and worship the Lord and march around. People are sitting, sitting at the light, light. Yeah. yeah, people sitting at the light, and they, they sit there and look at the place they and wonder what's going on over there. And it's just God. one man, gentleman called up, and he said, that sign, that place, just something, I, I, he just had to call up, and he praise needed God. help. He said, Correct. that sign, it was just the Holy Spirit. That's he good. said, I need help. I'm, I'm yeah. a, I'm my unemployment's going to be out in two weeks. He says, give me some scriptures. I said, who is this? He said, I saw that sign. Jesus is Lord and I need help. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So they just, they don't even move at the light. They just sit there and they just stare at the yeah. sign and they've been calling up. So the Holy Spirit's just been drawing them Praise in. If it's people want to drive by and they're in that neighborhood, now how, why don't you show them how they know where you're at? Well, we're right across, first of all, from the Roseville Theater. Right. Just off of Gratiot, uh, there's the big Catholic Sacred church. Hearts. I don't know Sacred the name Hearts. of it. Sacred Hearts is right across on Gratiot. Uh, Utica Road, Road runs at an angle into yeah. uh, Gratiot. It's 28. On, on Utica. Right We're on, on Utica. Utica Road. 28314 yeah. Utica Road. Right across from Roseville Theater. Right across from Roseville Theater. Theater. Could I share one thing? Sure can. Now, we have a lot of heartbreaking situations, but we also <laughs> have, I, I have to tell this one time, <laughs> last yeah. winter, uh, we were standing in front Christmas. of the inside, or Christmas time, the day before Christmas, we were standing inside the outreach center, and we look outside, and here comes this guy. Keep in mind, it's 20 degrees outside, snow on the ground. <laughs> he had a bathing suit on, a pair of shoes, and a T-shirt. Praise God. And we just b broke out laughing. We didn't laugh when he was in there, but we yeah. broke out laughing. Well, he was laughing, too. He was, yeah, when he walked through, he, we knew we were laughing, and he, he laughed a little yeah. bit. And what had happened was that he got brought up here with his wife, 
it was by a friend. The friend dropped off of the motel and never came back with any of his clothes or Took anything. Took everything oh, wow. of his. So we, we, we helped him find some clothes. We got him some food. And we didn't have the right clothing for him. We felt so bad for him that we took some money out of a till that we had to, mm -hmm. to we sent him down to another place to buy some pants because mm -hmm. he was just too hanging over the bell a little bit. <laughs> and <laughs> so, but the touching thing about it was is that we gave him some chocolate. And I just, the Lord, we had some little chocolates, yeah, right? And I, we gave it to him. And, and I don't know why. Why would you give somebody a little piece of chocolate like that? Mm -hmm. I gave it to him and, and he started to cry. And what it was is his, it was his wife's favorite candy. And she had really been hurting. She needed somebody to give her something. Yeah. Mm. And, but the guy got a job the next day at the motel where he's working at. Wow. He had new, uh, clothes. He went out and bought <laughs> some clothes. He came back dressed the next time. But we just, we have we a good have time. We oh, have good yeah. times right. with the yeah. people. They come back yeah. and we hear exciting stories. Right. They've gotten homes. They're, they've gotten their life straightened yeah. out. So it's not just all sad stories. We yeah. hear the praise reports, too. <laughs> it's, it's a <laughs> rewarding back. ministry. Oh. It's, it's it like is. your job of painting, because right. I had a painting business for five years. You're always doing something different. When you're done right. with a job, paint, wallpaper, you get, you look back and you get real satisfaction. Right. It's mm -hmm. the same way with your That's type it. of ministry. That's right. well, we can You've help seen somebody. Results. It's the greatest high. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, we, well, a lot of times high. we get uh, warned or uh, admonished by Christians, other Christians mainly. Mm -hmm. Say, well, don't help too much, yeah. or or be careful. You'll he may hurt. take advantage of you. Well, I tell you what, I want to say to, to whoever would come into our place right now, come in and take advantage of us, yeah. because I tell you what, God. We'll show you the way. We'll show you how to get to Jesus. And we, don't, you can take advantage of all you want, but you Jesus will. You got to answer for it, because we do get people at Christmas mm -hmm. time that come in, and well, we had one group that came into our outreach center to get a turkey that we were giving out, and then they went right to New Life to get another <laughs> get turkey. Another mm -hmm. But New Life and our, you know, that's where. Well, you're always gonna when you're dealing with that type clientele, uh, <clears throat> you're always gonna. Get took, you right. know. I mean, you're going to run into people, but well, like you say, God will take care of that. And then at times, uh, God will show you if somebody's yeah. a snake and not to give. Right. I mean, the, the Spirit of God will tell you many times. I know we deal with that type of thing at church too, but uh, you know, I'd rather be on the the, the soft side right. than get on the hardened right. side because of bad experiences and not be open and miss that angel unaware That's someday. Right. You know, I'd rather uh, be a little naive. Than a little hard. Right. Mm -hmm. I believe it's safer to be on that side of the fence. That's right. As, uh, well, Jesus even said in the last days that we're in right now, He right. says, "Because iniquity shall abound, or lawlessness and transgression shall abound, the love of many." And that word "love" is the God kind of love, right. agape. The love of many, God's love, in many shall wax cold. That's right. Mm -hmm. And but then it says, uh, but he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. And I believe in its context, talking about he that endures in love to the end. Right. I mean, we can't start out love and then quit. No. We got to continue to love and continue to reach. Well, you see, out. Steve, I gave a sermon one time on uh, the threefold uh, purpose of the church: edification, worship, and evangelism. And one of the things that we as a body can do is to edify. Yes. We do that at the outreach center That's so much true. to the people that come through. We we walk down the streets and, on Saturday nights and, and minister to the people on the streets. But we come across ministers who have fallen away. We come across Christians who are just looking for a good time and trying to find their way back. And we're able to edify them and direct them back to to church yeah. and to encourage right. them. Encourage them. Yes. We get so many people come into our, our location that are discouraged. Saturday night was a night everybody I got on the phone. You know, it was 700 this uh, 700. We have uh, a diverter, diverter line that comes in from the 700 Club. Mm -hmm. And everybody that was calling was talking about discouragement. And I was talking to them about being encouraged and edifying. But you know what? That lifted me up. Praise mm -hmm. God. But so many Christians are hurting today. Yes. And, and, and Jesus is the answer. If you're hurting, fine. Just hurt. But come back to God and God will heal you. Right, right. And we, if we can't help you, we'll find somebody that can give you yeah. help. Praise God. Well, it's good to know there's people like you that care enough. Uh, for the, the lonely and the destitute person that a lot of people yeah. and even churches don't want to deal with, mm -hmm. that you'll say, you'll give them a second look and a second yeah. chance, so to That's speak. Right. You don't stomp them in the ground. We need people like you, you know, to uh, undergird uh, churches. Like, uh, you're a great referral center for us. Just like last week we had uh, some of our counselors on here that helped myself and our church. In my case, though, so your ministry helps our ministry in the same right. way, mm -hmm. too. You are a branch of our ministry. Right. We can, if right. somebody comes in needs, we can say, hey, exactly. go on over to Lighthouse. Yes. See Mel and Sandy. They'll right. take care of you. Now, that's great. You know, right. you, 
you're a vital uh, part of uh, ministry, both of you, right. and the work you're doing. Well, you see, we're, we're just like the word says, we're a lighthouse. Right. We we're, 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 we doctor people up. We're we get them set up. Room. <laughs> right. We're the emergency room. We're the emergency room, and we send them to the churches because yes. we're not a church, and we send people to the churches. To the church. right. We get them lifted up to where some of them won't even go into a church because yes. they've been hurt in churches. They feel unworthy right. and not clean right. enough, and they don't want to walk into True. a church. So we had them come a few weeks just to keep encouraging them, get them in the Word, teach them, and then they feel comfortable, and then they'll go into a church. But they, they just feel so unworthy themselves. Oh, sure. There's yeah. a lot of people who don't, don't feel worthy to go into church. Yeah. That's just That's a lie it. from the devil. That's yeah. it. You know, people need to know. And you know, it's sad to say is, but a lot of churches won't let down and outers, right. quote, unquote, into their churches. Mm -hmm. And man, I'll tell you what, I don't think God's pleased with that. I heard a minister yeah. once tell me at, at a, another church that we went to, and he says, are you ready to sit next to the unloved? The right. guy who smells of alcohol right. had a guy last week. We were walking in our outreach center, and he put his arm out. He's drunker than a skunk. I mean, mm -hmm. he was so drunk he couldn't even talk. Mm -hmm. And he put his arms out like this, and his wife says, he just wants to hug you. Mm -hmm. So I went over and gave him a hug. Mm -hmm. And his wife says, he watches you out the window all the time, and you always hug everybody, talking about everybody that comes in there. Praise and he says, God. I want a hug. And we hugged him. Mm -hmm. And even though he was drunk, mm -hmm. we hugged him, and we loved him. And I'm ready to sit next to the unloved, not to pat myself Praise on the right, back. Right. But let me tell you something. I've been drunk. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. You were a drinker. That's right. Right. God delivered you. That's right. Somebody must have loved you, and you made it. That's right. So you're willing to love somebody else. You know, we need to, as Christians, be able to sit on the gutter with somebody sitting in the gutter and help them get up out of the gutter. Right. That's important. That's right. Because that person in the gutter could be us. Mm -hmm. That's right. If nobody cared for us, we wouldn't have a chance. We wouldn't make it. And the end result of that is split in hell wide yeah. open. We're talking about life and death here, and that's important. Right. Do we have uh, just a yeah, minute? about one minute, okay. yeah. I just sense that there's somebody out there that, that is, has got a lot of money and right now is in the gutter. Mm -hmm. He's in the gutter, and I want to tell you, you can get out of that gutter, and you can pick yourself up, and, and you can make it mm -hmm. if you'll just turn to Jesus. Praise God. We've had a lot of people that didn't need food. They didn't need clothes. They just were lonesome. They had money and mm -hmm. come in just, just for somebody just to talk to them mm -hmm. and sit with them. So you're welcome. You right. don't have to be in need of yeah. anything. Uh, just no. come in for a cup of coffee and have somebody to talk you to. Know, we're there for that. You too. hit some because money doesn't produce happiness. No. 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 I know a fellow that uh, was, you know, in a, I won't even say what business, but he had money, oodles mm -hmm. of money all his life. And he said to me after he got saved, he said, you know, Steve, I've never been happy a day in my life. Mm -hmm. And he's had all the finest exactly. cars, women, everything. But he said, never been happy a day in my life. So it wasn't the money, no. but people need people. That's they right. need, they need love. love. They need human response. Right. Well, Mel and Sandy, we thanks, uh, thank you so much for coming tonight. And, uh, you know, if anybody wants to uh, get behind that ministry, we want you to uh, let's share that number one more time, Sandy. Uh, the phone number is 776-1230. 776-1230. And uh, if you want to contact them through us too, that's all right. You can call or write us and we'll put you in touch. But if you feel that, even on a monthly, uh, you'll take monthly support. Oh, yes. We have uh, They'll take monthly support as just like the television ministry here. We will too. But feel free, if God's speaking to you, to, to put your dollars where they're going to go right out in the street. 100% uh, of every dollar is going to minister to somebody's personal need. Uh, feel free to uh, get behind that ministry. And uh, I'll tell you what, it, it's good to know that, again, that somebody cares for the unlovely because uh, it's easy to love the lovely, mm -hmm. but it's another thing when it comes to loving the unlovely. That's right. And I think that's a, a test of a real uh, person of faith, you know, if they're really following God. What are they doing with the unlovely person? So we hope you've been blessed tonight and encouraged. And uh, Mel and Sandy, thanks again for Thank being with us. Much. Uh, next week, I believe, we're going to start our China series. We're going to do three or four weeks on a recent China trip. Uh, myself and seven other people from our church took to China smuggling Bibles in. And we're going to give you the testimonies of the men that went on that trip and show you some film footage that we took. We took a camera in there, a video camera. So we're sure you want to see that next week. So be sure to tune in and tell somebody that you love them this week, especially Amen. that guy in the gutter. Amen. Or somebody that doesn't look like anybody loves them. Just reach out and put your arm around them and smile at them and say, Hey, I love you. I love you. I care for you. See you next week.
Praise God. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Amen.